In Search Of is an American television series that was broadcast weekly from 1977 to 1982, devoted to mysterious phenomena. It was hosted by Leonard Nimoy. The program investigated the controversial and paranormal, such as UFOs, Bigfoot, and the Loch Ness Monster. One of the best episodes in the series aired in June 1977 and investigated ghosts. The show opened with eerie music and blowing curtains from an upstairs window. Groans, creaks, and bumps in the night. Are ghosts real? If so, are they cute and cuddly like Casper the ghost? Are they mean and scary? Or perhaps they are misty gray visitors that are hauntingly beautiful. We at Typewriter Minutes were recently visited by a hauntingly beautiful gray ghost. This is Jonah from Typewriter Minutes, and today we're going to be doing a review of a 1973 Smith Corona Sterling, which we call the Gray Ghost. Ooh. So, we got this machine a few years ago, and it's been sitting in a case unloved because it required a repair that I just don't enjoy doing. I'll tell you about that in a minute. We call it the Gray Ghost because it's gray and it's hauntingly good looking. We did a review of a 19, I think 47 Sterling a few years ago, completely different looking machine. That was the kind of the classic black looking Smith Corona typewriter. Uh, those are made in the 40s. Then the Super Sterlings came out, I think in the 60s, and then they started making these uh, back to the plain old Sterling name in the 70s, and we really liked the looks of them. This one has this two-tone gray. We had a we had a two-tone blue, and I think we have another one buried somewhere in the collection. We'll have to get that out, but we really like the looks of these. Um, the name Grey Ghost, I have to admit, we stole it from Todd Payne and Lazy Dog Typewriters. They sold a typewriter that they called the Grey Ghost, and I just thought that was such a cool name. So hopefully we don't get a trademark infringement letter from Lazy Dog Typewriters. Um, so the you'll recognize a lot of the features because we've reviewed other Smith Coronas before. You got the touch selector over there for light, medium, and heavy touch dedicated one and exclamation mark uh what do we have over here jonah the color selector color selector so black stencil which nobody cares about anymore and then red it's got a key set tabulator for setting and clearing your tabs instead of having manual tab stops on the back and it's got the uh, articulating ribbon cover which they came out with those with the galaxy style i think back in the late 50s early 60s and stuck with it through the super sterling and this final sterling line and then it's got just a really cool looking logo on the front you got the smith corona logo there and a really nice looking silver medallion sterling logo so Overall, just a really neat looking machine, especially with the two-tone gray. A lot of times, the uh, carriage release levers are missed, are missing or cracked. These are in good shape. You'll see there's a little bit of scuffs down here. That's where the cleat in the back of the typewriter case goes and somebody wasn't careful. But that, you see that a lot on Smith Coronas. Otherwise, the paint it's in really good shape. A few little nicks here and there. I'd say it's a A to an A minus as far as looks. Over here you have the variable line spacer. They went away from the pullout type on the old Sterlings and started using the plunger on the Super Sterling and these Sterlings. So if you can't get exactly where you need to be on a form, um, you just push that in and then the clicks go away. Actually, I'll let you hold the camera for a minute, Jonah. So just push it in and then that releases the clicks and you can go wherever you need to 
on a form, if you're filling out a form. This little guy right here, if you'll zoom in. Jonah, a little closer, a little closer. This guy does the same thing. Pull it out, it releases the clicks. And then when, you, when you're done, pull it back. This one retains your line spacing. So if you need to type H2O, for example, with the lower, lower two, uh, once you click it back, it remembers the line spacing you were at before. If you use the plunger over here for the variable line spacing, you lose that. So that's the difference between that and that guy. Up here, you'll see the line space lever. Mm, come on, top a little bit, Jonah, there you go. One, two, and three. Got your little left hand side, uh, I don't know what that's called, the paper, it's not the paper scale, but that's just the where you line up the paper on the left hand side. We usually keep it at zero. It's got simple push and slide margins, which is just the bulletproof design as opposed to the fancier Hermes ribbon thing. Uh, one thing that disappeared on the Super Sterling line and it stayed gone on this model sterling is the paper support there's no pop-up paper support no rabbit ears no fold out so the paper as you're typing can have a tendency to flop over backwards a bit but not a big deal but i wish do wish they had kept the paper support feature from the like the galaxy had the rabbit ear paper support uh it's got a really robust Paper bale here comes out in a couple different directions. If you'll come up to the top a little bit, Jonah, you can see it goes up this way, also pulls out this way. So easy to get your paper in and out of there. Right here, if you'll come in a little bit, ignore that stuff in the background. That's your paper release lever. So if you get the paper in crooked and you need to straighten it, just flip it up, scoot your paper, and flip it back. As a quick release platen. Uh, so this little plastic thing comes up like this. Lift up the paper bale. Move the carriage all the way to the right. And then there's a little retention lever right here. You lift that up and then twist and out it comes. So you can get any paper or junk that's stuck in there also makes it easier to clean the typewriter when you're taking it all apart. So reverse process, you just go back in, twist. Use two hands, down it goes. You're good to go. Uh, there is, if you look under the ribbon cover, right here, that is your manual uh, switch for the ribbon reverse. So as you're typing, one spool will pull in this direction. If you want to manually reverse it, flip that lever, then this spool will start pulling. And it does have a ribbon reverse system and you have to have eyelets in because the eyelet, when it gets to the very end of the ribbon, comes out, triggers that little fork right there, and then the other ribbon starts pulling. So this one has the original metal spools, which is kind of cool. Uh, one thing I like about the older Sterlings as opposed to the newer Sterling is that they went to a metal or a plastic shaft here as opposed to a metal one. Not a big deal. This is kind of tight when you're putting the spools on and especially when you're taking them off. You gotta squeeze that in a little bit and it really takes some upward force to pull it off. You can uh, cut a little bit of that off to help. I think Dwayne Jensen at Phoenix Typewriter has a video on how to do that. We're just gonna leave it as is, but they are a little bit harder to take off because of this plastic shaft. And I think that about covers it for all the features. Line space selector, it does have the page gauge here. We're not gonna show you how to do that in this video, but we did re review a 1956 Smith Corona and we show you how to use the page gauge. So if you're interested in that, go look at our 1956 Smith Corona video. So we'll put the ribbon, ribbon cover back. One thing to be careful of, uh, a lot of times the ribbon covers on these get scratched because when it's open, 
or people try to open it when the return arm is over here and then that will scratch the cover. So when you open the ribbon cover, make sure the carriage is over to the left. We did have this thing uh, completely apart for cleaning and uh, tuning and adjusting. Oh, so the the repair that I don't enjoy doing, I'm gonna switch the camera off and take it back from Jonah. You can't see it here, but there is a cork strip underneath the key levers. And on every now and then, I, have, I think I have two or three of these that I bought and the, the cork strip has come out. It's supposed to be kept there I think originally it was glued in place and then the tension of the the, the uh, key levers underneath keep it in place well it was out and it's just a pain to put back in you can put it you can just manipulate it back into place and it should stay there but I wanted to glue it in place because otherwise if somebody doesn't know what they're doing and they push a bunch of keys down at once that cork strip can come right back out so uh, when we had it apart, I used some mini bamboo skewers and to get a little bit of glue in there. And it, it's just like playing Operation the game from when I was a kid. You have to get in there without getting glue or touching the sides, and it's just a pain. So anyway, I did that repair and did a complete chemical clean, and it's just about as good as new. So we'll uh, come right back for the type test. My dad forgot to show you guys the carriage centering lever. So here it is right here when you're ready to put it in the case. It's not really a carriage lock because it doesn't lock the carriage, but it stops it at the halfway point. So when you push it in, move the carriage over, it stops. That way it's centered in the case and the lid won't come down and smash the handle. And then when you're ready to type, you just move it and then that pops down and you're ready to go. Before my dad does the type test, he's going to show you the bottom of the machine. So we'll carefully tilt it back. I don't want to scratch the paint on the bottom. So here's the... Uh, here's the bottom of the machine. The feet are still nice and soft like new. It's got this bottom panel which is held on with four screws. That one, that one, that one, and that one. So you can take that bottom panel off for adjustments if you don't want to take everything off. Um, one other thing I forgot to show you before the type test. I'm going to hand this back to Jonah. One thing I don't like about the Galaxies and the Super Sterlings and the Sterlings is the... Uh, I'll show you on this side. In order to get this plastic key cover off, there's a couple screws in there. Um, you have to take... You really have to get this out of the way. You take the, the ribbon cover off. And once you take the ribbon cover off, I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna get the camera down in here. There's a little piece of metal right in there, right where that hole is. And you can see the cutout shape. And in order to get this key cover off, this plastic piece, you have to bend that piece of metal I think it's supposed to go down. So you bend it down, that way this can come out this way. So not a fan of that design. I'm sure they didn't think people were gonna be taking the key covers off that often for cleaning and maintenance. But we, when we take a machine apart for cleaning, we take everything off. And so the key cover has, has to come off. And I just don't like that little tab feature to get that thing out. So anyway, it's just a, a minor annoyance but I'll hand this back to Jonah for the type test we're doing the review at a different table because we have a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle on our normal table and we're we're just out of room so all right paper in this is not the ideal height and my table's a little wobbly, but we'll see how it goes here. So I'll do a couple lines on black. There's the bell. And if you keep going, get to the end of the line and the line lock kicks in. So if you come up here, Jonah, 
that prevents the type bar from hitting the last uh, letter and typing over itself. So if you want to go out into the margin, that's what the little MR key over here is for. Margin release. Now you can type into the margin. Same thing if you need to get into the left-hand margin, you just have to hit the margin release key. Okay, let's do another line on red. Oh, typos. I really like the typing action on these. The keys for me are just the right height. I love the big space bar. Some typewriters, the space bar butts up right against the front frame and my thumb kind of hits the frame. I like the design on this because the space bar is just easy to hit and you don't have to worry about that front frame. So if you'll pardon the typos, then I'll show you what the print looks like. Uh, yeah, lots of typos, but you can see everything's nice and crisp. Clean the type slugs. I think this is Elite Typeface. Uh, but one of my favorite typing machines, this, the citations from the 60s, as far as actual typing feel, if it's not my favorite, it's definitely one of my favorite typers. It just has a great typing action to it. That's our dog Tucker in the background. Pardon the noise. So there you go. We'll be back for some pros and cons after we look at the case. Now we're gonna look at the case. This is also one of our favorite cases because it's made of aluminum. It's made by Samsonite. So these are just bulletproof. Um, it's got two little latches right down here. By the way I have the tag on here because I've secured the key. Kind of neat that it comes with the original key so you can lock it to keep your super secret papers safe inside. Um, but to open it you just push these guys in. It comes right up. This has, you can tell it was well taken care of because usually they don't have the original styrofoam thing here that cushioned the top of the machine. Um, but you can see it was made with care and packed with pride. This little guy here, this latch, when you close the case, if you could see this button right here, when the case closes, that pushes down and that actually locks the typewriter in the case. And so when you when you open the case and you want to get the machine out, you gotta push this guy up. And it has two cleats inside the, the case. This guy back here, that's the one that scuffs the back of the machine if you're not careful. That goes into the slot in the back of the machine. And then right down here, there's another cleat. And that goes into a slot on the bottom frame. So, really good design. They're just really are bulletproof. I'd say the one, I don't know if it's a weak spot, a lot of times, not a lot of times, every now and then you'll see this a busted latch because the latch here is made out of plastic and um, this plastic handle on each side ends with a little plastic part that sticks in and does the same thing over here. It's the, just the tip of the handle. Every now and then those are broken off because you're really carrying a lot of weight with the machine and the case and all that weight bears down on the tip of this handle which you can't see because it's inside this plastic cover so I don't know if that's a weak spot but every now and then you'll see a busted handle right there or this plastic piece has been busted off so that's the only weak spot on the design of this case because otherwise it's made out of aluminum if they get dented which they do sometimes when they're shipped uh, you can open it up and pound it out on the inside with a rubber hammer or rubber mallet to even it out. 
and uh, this one didn't have it, but sometimes this plate down on the bottom with the hinge gets rusted. This one is just nice and squeaky clean, so not a concern on this machine. So that's the case. Here's a quick look at some other Sterlings that we've had in our collection. This is a 1A series flat top. They made these from 1934 to 1941 or so. This one's a gorgeous maroon color. We haven't cleaned it up and uh, tuned it up yet, but that's something we might cover in a future episode. This here, I believe, is a 1947 Sterling that makes it a 4A series. They had a 2A that began in 1938 and a 3A, 4A and 5A all the way through 1964. Then the 5AX series has kind of a unique front plate. This blue one we did a review of, they made these from 1963 to 1966. Then the Super Sterlings, the 6SS series, they made those from 1966 to 72. We did a review of that one as well. And then finally the 6SME Sterlings, like this two-tone blue in our gray ghost. We'll finish this review with some pros and cons of this 1973 Smith Corona Sterling. Okay, here's the pros that we could identify. The cool styling, the gray ghost, two-tone gray color scheme. It's just, I just love the looks of that. Well, back up here, it's got the silver medallion logo on the front. We just really like the looks of that. It looks really classy has really nice typing action. The This series, Smith Corona, the other machines from the 60s are just one of my favorites to type on. Space bar does not butt up against the front frame. We love that, at least if you have big thumbs like I do, you don't have to worry about the thumb hitting the frame. I think the Hermes 3000 I really like, but my thumb seems to hit the front frame a lot. The aluminum case made by Samsonite, for the most part, it's a pretty bulletproof case with a few little quirks. This machine here has the original metal spools, as opposed to plastic ones, so just gives it, again, a cool look. It has the original case key, which you don't usually see. It's fairly easy to get under the machine for maintenance. You just take four screws off. And to get the rest of the body panels off, it's a little more involved because there's some screws under here to get the ribbon cover off. Getting that the back plate off is a little bit of a challenge because there's some springs that you need a spring hook to get it off. So it's just, you know, a little bit more challenging than the older machines to get apart, but at least to get under the machines easy. You just take four screws off and that's where you get most of the access for most maintenance items. Uh, we like the robust paper bale that goes up this way and out this way. The uh, quick release platen. Most people don't need to get their platens in and out that often, but uh, if you get something jammed under there, kind of nice to be able to take it out quickly. And then Jonah, once you scooch up to the microphone a little bit, closer, closer, and give us some of the cons. Some cons are there's no paper rest. So the it's not bad now, but as you get towards the end of the paper, it can flop down a little bit like that instead of being held up. All right, some other cons. Hollow platen makes typing a little loud. Yeah, the, this platen is hollow, and it's just a, a little louder because of that than some machines, but not a big deal. More well, plastic than earlier Smith Corona's. And the plastic would include I mean, the key cover, it's plastic as opposed to the like the super silent supers from the 50s didn't have plastic like that it's got these plastic carriage release handles which sometimes are cracked or missing and then little plastic shafts there and some other places underneath the machine the little ribbon drive spools or gears are plastic so a little more plastic a little less metal than on some of the older smith coronas um metal tab that you have to bend to get the key cover off yeah that's a, just a minor point but the little no oh, i should already show you that but over here just that little tab that you gotta bend uh, yeah it's in there to get the plastic key cover off kind of a minor annoyance annoyance but 
overall, just an excellent machine, excellent typer, excellent case. It's just a ghostly good machine. Thank you for joining us on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye. Mm-hmm.